it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, uh, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. Hi, this is Drew Pliska, and you're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, 2021 is finally here. Good riddance to uh, 2020. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Uh, But I'm optimistic. I'm really hoping 2021 will turn around. Tonight, we're going to be chatting with John. And John comes to us from Ontario, Canada. And he had probably one of the more fascinating accounts I've heard. Uh, because really pay attention, and I won't go into the, I'll let John tell the story, but pay close attention to what the creature does, the route it takes to get away from John and off this property. And it made me really think, you know, when people talk about lighting up their properties, does that actually work? And uh, after John's encounter, I kind of think it does. Uh, But it's still fascinating to listen to. Uh, Leanne is also going to be on the show tonight. Leanne comes to us. She's originally from Wyoming. And her and her friend were driving down the highway. And they saw this extremely large man, naked man, uh, crawling across the road. And they hit the brakes and, and got really close to this thing and realized it wasn't a man. If you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. This time of year, we reflect and kind of look back at things. And last night, I was kind of doing that, thinking about the show. And I never thought I would do the show this long. Uh, First of all, I thought I'd be done. I thought I would have quit years ago. Uh, from doing the show, but I do enjoy talking to people. I do enjoy, uh, I love and hate doing shows. Uh, I'm never happy with them. I'm never happy with the sound quality. I know I'm not the best speaker in the world. I mumble a lot. (laughs) I'm well aware of it. And I hate listening to the show because I hate hearing my own voice. Uh, But you know, I think that the day I quit doing this, the two things I'll be the most proud of is creating And I don't even know that I created it. It's eyewitnesses coming forward. It's not really something I've done. Uh, But I've heard the comment from other people, man, you have a really well-educated audience. I mean, and and I think that after you hear encounter after encounter after encounter, you learn behaviors, you learn descriptions. And uh, I think it kind of (laughs) drives the Bigfoot world a little crazy. Uh, Because most people who do tune tune into this show, you know, are are very well educated on the subject. And uh, so, and that's on you guys for listening. And I think the other thing I'll be proud of is a lot of people will say to me, 
And I never believed in Bigfoot. I thought it was BS. I turned on your podcast as a joke. And then after about 10 encounters, you know, I started believing, geez, there's something out there, you know, not all these people are lying. And, uh, you know, so maybe in a small, small way, when I leave this subject, uh, I've changed a, uh, changed the subject a little bit, or maybe left uh, my humble mark on the subject. Uh, but the show really would be nothing if no one listened to it. So I really want to take this time and, and thank you so much for listening to the show. And I want to thank the members for supporting the show, uh, because without you guys, there wouldn't be a show. And uh, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I was kind of reflecting on everything. I wish everyone nothing but the best in 2021. Um, and I know <laughs> you're not here to hear me ramble. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, John to the show. John, thanks for coming on. Hey, my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, John, I appreciate you being here. And I know uh, you had an encounter in Ontario, Canada. And, uh, you know, your encounter still fascinates me. I, I, you and I talked the other day. And just the way the creature made the exit. Uh, but if you would, kind of start from the very beginning. Kind of tell us what you were doing and and walk us into what happened, if you would. Okay, sure. Um, so we have family that own a, 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 a rural piece of property outside of a town in a, here in Ontario, Canada, called Chesley, Ontario. Uh, small place, like uh, populations like 1,800 people. And it's very rural where we're, we were staying. And so we go there every year and we spend a weekend with them and it's a, um, give, you know, people an idea, like it's no power to this property, um, no hydro, no lights, uh, or sorry, no electricity, no lights. Uh, if you want, you know, outhouse is your bathroom and it's a great place for this family of ours to, to get away from the city. They live down in the city. So we always meet up with them and, and go there cause it's only about an hour drive from where we live. So we showed up on one particular weekend. It was late when we arrived and we had a late dinner. And when dinner wrapped up, it was getting dark and actually it was getting quite dark and we decided, well, let's, let's have a bonfire. We'll have a couple of drinks and just everybody socialize and catch up. And so prior to that, I just thought, you know, okay, I'm going to take a little walk and, you know, I'm going to go water some bushes. Right. I just, you know, had to go. And, <clears throat> So I walked off uh, around the corner, and it's a like a again. I'm on this property. Um, you're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no street lights. There's no nothing. It's a a road that's only just recently been kind of black topped. Um, and so I just went around the far side of the bush and you know do my thing. And as I'm uh, like standing there. Um, I was looking over to the property next door and it's a small farm. And if I had to guess, we were talking about like a 40 acre, 50 acre small farm. And the thing about this property, every time I've gone there and we've gone there year after year is that the guy's got his property lit up like a Christmas tree all summer long. He's got spotlights out the back, the front and all the sides. And the one spotlight goes all the way to the bush line, which is going to be from the barn to the bush, it's going to be you're somewhere around the football field, about a hundred yards. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking like, you know, man, like your, your electricity bill must be out of sight. And he has sheep. Um, and he keeps sheep from the spring to the fall. And I guess whatever he does, if they're for meat or whatever, they're gone. And, you know, I've asked the people that own the property uh, that we stay with, is it like this every night? And they said all summer long until he gets rid of the sheep. And the sheep aren't left out at night. He puts them in this really well-built barn. So anyway, I'm just looking at that, and I'm I'm just thinking, like, man, like, those spotlights must just eat power, and your bill must be nuts. But <clears throat> So anyway, as I'm there, um, I catch some motion off to my left, and I actually heard what sounded like a rocks tumble, and there's a really deep ditch from the road. And, uh, and where we are, like, it's all bush and farms and there's no subdivisions no nothing it's like when you're out there it's dark right and i hear the sound and i'm looking over and because of the light shine coming from this property that's all lit up i can see uh, a bit of a silhouette of something moving from the ditch and the people we're staying with they've had a problem where one time when they were there uh, people come around and probably figure and look at the steel like ATVs or dirt bikes. And that's the first thing that goes to my head. Like, And when this, what I 
thought was a person come up out of the ditch, you could clearly see that they were being careful how they walked. And by that, I mean, like, sometimes the arm would kind of go to the side. Um, the feet, when it would, I could basically see it from the waist up. But sometimes it would lift its legs and place them down going over small trees and shrubs. And you could tell it was being careful, trying not to make noise. And at this point, this is 40 feet away from me. And I don't know if it saw me, whatever, I don't know. But it, it began to angle away from me. And as it angles away, it's actually getting closer to the, the spotlights, like the, kind of the boundary of these lights, if you will, how far the light was reaching. And I'm about to yell, like, you know, hey, who is this? Just as I was going to do that, as it turned, I got the whole, like, profile of the head. See it on a side view. And it, I'll be honest, like, it just kind of like, like, whoa. And I remember, like, I'm just like, what the F is this? If I was to describe it, it was like egg shaped. Um, I've heard people on your show use the word um, conical, I believe, and I would use the term cone head. I'd never heard of the conical before, but it like had a like a like a big cone head and a very protruding jaw is what I saw. And as it kept walking, what really like that head freaked me out because I was just like didn't didn't it's not no person has a head shape like this and. Then what really, and I was about to still going to like yell like, Hey, and, and then the arm reached out as it went to go over these small trees that had been planted. They've been reforesting part of this area. And when the arm went, reached out just the sheer length of it, I was just like, I remember I was just in shock. I was like, what the hell am I looking at? <clears throat> and as it kept angling away, it's getting closer to where the boundary of the light is and I'm seeing it better and better. And then it walked out of this kind of shrubby undergrowth area, if you will, to now it's into a mowed area where the grass has been mowed or the lawn has been mowed. And it's kind of at the boundary of the light that's shining from this farm next door. And it's still walking on the property of the people that we stay with. But now I can see the full silhouette. And as it walks, like I'm getting the profile it had, a minuscule neck, if, if at all. When it turned its head, you could see this little bit of a neck. The head, as I said, was massive. It looked, it actually looked too big for the body. Um, to describe the body, it would be like a a basketball player, but not like a guy that's all jacked up, like you know, not like a LeBron James or something like that. A thin build. Um, it looked like it was about my height. So we're talking. Six foot, it might have been as maybe as much as six, six, maybe. The ground we're on is level, so we're pretty well level with each other. And as it's angling away, it's now 50-odd feet away. And when it walked, it was very casual the way it walked. Um, <clears throat> I remember the arms, the length of them as it kind of walked, if it stopped and just held them down straight, the fingers would have been past where your kneecap is, where the kneecap is. Like, they're long, long arms. And this thing is like like a long, lanky thing, right? And I'm I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of freaked out because I couldn't like what is this? I couldn't you know what is I can't you know this this is not a man. There's no doubt. Um, at least that's how your head's going. And just as I'm about to yell, and I was gonna yell to people with fire because I'll be honest, I was a little uncomfortable. Like I like I didn't know what I was looking at. And just as I'm about to do that, this thing just all of a sudden starts to run. And it's running basically on the boundary of the properties, the light. Um, it's like a perfect silhouette. So we're black on our side because there's no light on our side, but it's all lit up over there where this farm is. And in three strides, this thing got moving at a pace like there's no possible way this is a man. There's no no way. I don't care. You know, Hussein Bolt, Usain Bolt um, could like, – nothing. There's no possible – like three strides, and I mean it is going. And the other thing about when it ran – <clears throat> and I, and I, I still to this day, like it was three years ago, I saw this. At some point, what, at least once a week, this will go through my head because your head doesn't know where to put it because you don't know what it is. Um, the arm movement, like literally, if you look at like a sprinter, you get your arms at a ninety degree. The bicep, when it come forward, like the arm would come forward, the bicep is facing the sky, and then when it would place its arm and go behind it, it would actually 
like get beyond 180 degrees. So the bicep is now at the ground. And then the elbow, even with how big this thing's head was, would almost like be look, look like it was reaching up as height of its, of its top of its head. Like, so I don't know how many degrees that would be. It was like well over 200 degrees. And it only did that kind of a motion. I'm going to say for its first 12, 15 strides. And then it kind of a more of a normal arm motion as it ran, but it was like, I mean, this thing's moving. Right. And, Again, as I said, like from the spotlights where they are on the barn to where the tree line is, it's it's a good football field, right? And <clears throat> this thing ran parallel to the, the – so it's not like directly in the spotlights. Um, and then as the lights get dimmer, as you get closer to the back of the property, it began to cut across. So it didn't do like a straight line. It kind of did this little uh, jog to its right, and it kind of ran to the middle of the field and then back out again. And it, again, just going like there's no tomorrow. I mean, I just couldn't get my head around the speed, right, what I'm, what I'm seeing. And as it cut across the field, and now the light is on it a lot better, I can see that it's got, looks like brown hair all over the entire body. Um, it's At one point, its back was to me as it's going away. And like I said, you can just see the, the, the brown hair. And then the part that really blew my mind, as it, I'm going to guess, Let's say it's 20 yards, yeah, 20, 25 yards from the tree line. This thing, again, it's just going flat out, and it's running, like, parallel to me. So I'm looking at it from the side, and all of a sudden, it's just, like, I thought it tripped. And it's, it's, it's like the whole body is just heading forward. It's off its feet. Now its chest is parallel to the ground. I don't know how high it would be. It would be 6 to 10 feet off the ground. And it's like... Like uh, just like it, like it dove forward. I initially thought it tripped. That was my what went in my mind. And then just as it's about to hit the ground, it catches catches itself with its its. Uh, oh, and I, I should mention, um, when it did this like this move where it kind of dove forward, the arms were straight out at its side. Like I mean, just straight out. Like uh, like you were like like making a cross, eh? Just like straight out. And then. As it's about to come to the ground, the arms come down, the arms catch it, the back legs start pumping, and this thing took two massive strides and like a like a dog would run, and it's in the bush, and it went into the bush at full speed. Like, I mean, it wasn't slowing down. It wasn't like, that wasn't a way to slow it. It just like, boom. And then I would, if I had to take a guess, it may be bad, I would say that it was even faster on all fours than it was on two feet. And, you know, and in retrospect, when I look back on this and I, like I said, for three years, I've just, you know, every week there's some, I'll have a dream about it or I'll just be driving and there's nothing going on and it'll play over my head. Two things. It was almost like when it jumped out with its arms like that at its side. And it's, it's almost like when I look back now that I don't think it tripped. It was almost like exuberance or showboating or, you know, like, like if, you know, if, if we, a touchdown or hit a three point. You know what I mean? How people is just, it was just so kind of showing like, off. It, it, yeah. That's, that's how I took it, right? Like a showboating move. And the other thing I'm thinking at the point where it was good, into, like it's getting dark now because the light has reached its limit. This thing hit a forest that's got shrubs, rocks, trees, you know, the whole flat out like this thing must be able to see well in the dark because i mean like if you and i ran into a bush flat out in the pitch black you're gonna we're gonna flatten ourselves on a tree right and uh like it was just what and then the other thing too if i'm going to give this a time frame i'm gonna say that that thing went that 100 to 120 yards like i said when it kind of cut across the field that takes more distance it covered that entire time frame and i've done this over my head and over four to five seconds and it was gone the initial part of it i probably watched it i'm going to say for about 20 and coming up at maybe even a little bit longer coming up out of the ditch and then a whole bit because it was just walking at a, a very slow pace so you could tell it was being careful but when it hit that like it i mean the, the speed that it covered that field in was insane and um, you know, you and I, when we talked the other day, you talk about how like your brain doesn't know what to do with or how to put you, you made this comment about your brain can't put it in a box. And that's exactly where I'm at with this. 
And one of the things that I guess I'm thankful for is that if it had not done that move at the end where it kind of ran like a dog, I probably would have talked myself into the fact that that was just some guy. He saw me, he was startled, and and I would have convinced myself that, yeah, there, maybe there's a guy out there who can run that fast. Even though deep down inside, you know there's no no bloody way, right? It just couldn't happen. Basically, in a nutshell, that's that's what happened. And uh, yeah. the whole thing... 30 odd seconds let's say but it was it's life-changing because i still to this day like i told you i my head doesn't know what to do with it i think about it all the time yeah i think that's what happens a lot you know it's like just like you and i were talking the other day it's like you you don't know what box to put it into you don't know quite what you're looking at you don't know yeah. quite what you're you want to tell yourself it's a man you want to tell yourself it's a bear you want it but as you're watching it nothing really seems to add up um, exactly. It, it, what's fascinating about the account is how it avoided the light, how it ran around the spotlights instead of, I'm assuming from your description, if it would have just ran across where the spotlight was at, it would have been a lot shorter distance from the route. It Definitely. Took. You're right. It, it, it was avoiding like going out in the wide open where it could easily be seen. Right. Um, it, it, and then only come across the field on that other angle when the light began to really dim, but you could still make it out clearly but it was much, much dimmer than it was when it first started its run. Also, too, it makes me think, I wonder why that farmer has that place lit up like a Christmas tree at night. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, you know what, Wes? I'm going to get the nerve. I was going to do it this year when we went. I'm going to get the nerve to go over there and try and talk to them and just say, look, I saw something bizarre. And I'm, I'm really, I'm almost, I'm praying that they're going to say, like, yeah, we got something here we can't explain. Because... Something's happened to make them do that. Now, either maybe, who knows, it could be just something like a break-in, right? But to light your property up like that, your electric, like up here in Ontario, um, power's not cheap. But we pay stupidly high rates. And those spotlights, and he doesn't have solar, there's nothing like that. It's just like, bam. And there's a reason why he's doing it. And I wondered, did I, you know, this is me wanting to back up what I saw. Did he lose sheep to, to something? Um, is this what stops all the problems? I don't know. But you're right. I I want to get the nerve up, and I'm gonna next year when we go. I, I told myself I'm gonna walk over there, and I'm just gonna say hi and just tell them. And you know, they may say, you know what, get the hell out of here, or maybe they'll come up and kind of help me, you know, verify what I what I I, I saw. Yeah, I mean, it, there's really no reason for him to have all the spotlights on that property unless he's had problems with these things before. I can't even imagine, you know, if you had something stolen off your property, you would night after night light it up with spotlights. You know what I mean? Yeah, eventually, you know what, the anger and the frustration wears out. And, you know, say something like the ATV was saying, you're not going to pay insane amounts of money every month, right? It's eventually, you're just going to, okay, and nothing's happened, and you'll stop, right? Um, but I, I, my gut feeling is that they're doing it for a reason, and I wonder if what I saw is part of that reason. Do you think the creature knew you were there? I mean, you talked about showboating a little bit, but do you think it actually knew you were watching it? Um. You know what? My gut feeling is that when it come up out of the ditch, the first few steps it took through the brush, I had think it had no clue I was there. And I do believe that when it began to angle away, not that it quickened up its pace, but it changed its route. And like it could have walked through our property, or no, sorry, my the family's property that we stay at, and been in complete black. I still would have seen it because of the lighting behind, but certainly not anywhere as clear. And my gut feeling is it was 40 feet away when this first began to walk out. And, and then it turned, and to get to the edge of the light, it would have been 60-odd feet. And I think it did. And I also wondered, was that showboating to kind of like show me, like, you know, look look at me, right? You know, I, I don't know. But I if you ask me, and I replay this over and over and over in my head, I think it saw me, and that's why it turned away. That's my gut feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just kind of curious what yeah. you thought. You know, when you go back yeah. to your, your, your friend's property, do you, do you talk with them? I mean, have they experienced anything <laughs> out there? Well, okay. Here's the thing. Um, I never told anybody but my immediate family. I told my better half and she, um, she, you know, she's good. She just kind of, you know what, she'll listen. And uh, I told my kids. Um, and I, I think that they they know that based on, my expression and, and, and the fact that I'm 
you know, talking about it, that they, that I saw something. They, they, I think they're convinced on that. Um, the people who own the property, I never intended to tell them. And so we were there again this just past summer um, before all the COVID stuff went nuts and you shouldn't go anywhere. We were in there for a visit and my better had had a couple of glass of wine. And then she said, you should he- have John tell you what he saw two years ago. And I had no intention of telling them, but anyway, then they asked. And so I did. And they were really good about it. Actually, they were almost looked like they were kind of freaked out, but, um, my better half sister-in-law, she said, you know something, I don't know what it is, but she said, I have always at night been creeped out on this property. And she said, I can't explain it to you. And she said, you've just made it worse for me now. And like, you, cause it's an outhouse, right? So if you're, they have a trailer, you're sleeping in a trailer, you want it. You, and she said this, and she will make her husband walk her. And they've done that before they even heard about this. And she said, I don't know what it is, but there's something about this property at night, she said. It freaks me right out. So, again, I've heard people on your show talk about, you know, like your sixth sense or, you know, like people, the reaction that people get when they haven't even seen one of these things yet. Maybe she sensed something. I don't know. But she, she said, and she doesn't have that feeling anywhere else. Yeah, it, it really makes me wonder, especially with the farmer and really what's going on on that property. And, you know, they do, they move um, the way you describe it. And I always say it on the air that uh, they move very unnatural. It's not a, um, oh. it's very, very natural in my opinion. Agreed. When you talk about unnatural, even when it walked, it doesn't, like it was a casual, but it, it's its legs do something that's not like you and I would walk. Um, and the arm motion when it ran, uh, like I, I, I defy a human being to, to replicate it. I just, you, you can't. You can't move your arms on your shoulder in that big of an axis. You just, you cannot do it. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. It really is. And, you know, especially seeing it go down to all fours, you know, like it. you thought it tripped. Yeah. It didn't trip. It just kind of Superman forward and then... Um, it was bam, it exactly. was down on all fours. And you're right, you know, if you and I jumped in a bush in the middle of the night, we would probably end up in the hospital. You know what I mean? And these yeah. things just seem to, uh, it defies reality, really. Uh, what did you think of the whole topic of Sasquatch prior to seeing this creature? I was um, very open to it. I remember watching In Search Of, and my kids were little and we'd watch it. And I used to joke around with them that when I retire, I'm going to go find Bigfoot and I'm going to be rich. And they, you know, you'll never find them dead. And so I was open to it. And the reason I was open simply from the sheer, like the, the amount of sightings, it, it, it never stops. Every year there's people coming forward. And I got into your program after I saw this because I wanted to, you know, it just like, like again, your, your brain's trying to find a place to put this. And like, like you, uh, all the people that come on and what they see and and there's tons of podcast shows and and i i don't believe that there's that many people coming forward that um like, like not everybody's crazy and you know like i'm just your average guy and i just got something that i saw and i don't know what to do with it and talking about it helps but i was open i was open um but again i was kind of like but you know what at the end of the day i have to see one and that, that's where I was with it. Yeah. Would you want to see another one? Um, you, you know, um, I, I think I'd rather be like driving along in a car. Um, <laughs> yeah. You, I like, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to lie. When it, when I saw the full profile and I, this head was just like completely like just couldn't, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit, I was intimidated. I'm not going to lie. Like, not like it, there was no sounds, no nothing, but I'm looking at something that I don't want to have to deal with because I can't even figure out what the hell you are. Right. Um, so I, 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 I certainly would. And maybe that would help, you know, verify what I, what I, I saw. Um, but I don't want to have anything like some of the people that's been on your program, like, like that close. And I think I'm probably glad that it was as dark as it was because I can't, I couldn't make out like any facial features. Right. Um, I didn't notice any glowing eyes or nothing like that. Um, maybe if I could, have, from 40 feet, I could have seen features. I think that might've messed me up even more, probably been more intimidating or scary, but, uh, yeah, you know what? I'd love to be wailing down the highway and just see something stand there on the side of the road. I'd be good with that. 
you and me both, that's the encounter. I'm always yeah. jealous when people have those encounters. People always say those yeah. are the most boring encounters, but that's the exact encounter I'd want is driving down the highway. Yeah, boring. Like, oh, there it is. Well, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> you know yep. what I mean? Yep. Exactly. Boring's good. Um, like I said, this was nothing traumatic about this except from like, and I'm the type of person that just, maybe it's the way my brain works. You like to explain something, right? And I, I really can't. Um, and like, and like I said, the, the term that you use was so perfect for what I'm doing with it every week in my head, you can't put it in a box and go, Oh, it's that you just, you, you, you can't, you can't, you know what I, I, I think if you ask me, I think I saw a juvenile Sasquatch. That's what I think I saw. Um, I think I saw one that's, that's why it was thin and lanky. It's just like a teenager, right? And that's what I think I saw. But can I definitively say that? No, no, I can't. And that's part of what bugs me about the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. They don't move like any other creature, I think on this planet, you know, they, yeah. they just don't, um, not even eight, you know, your great apes, uh, the non-human primates, they, they are, they're a lot quicker. They're a lot smoother. They're faster, stronger. Um, it, it's kind of terrifying. I mean, what do you think that they are, John? What's kind of your, I know this happened to you three years ago and you've been, kind of looking into it your whole life, but I would imagine after the encounter, you're really looking into it now. What's your gut tell you as far as what these things are? And you know, from the show, there's, there's no wrong answer. No. And and I've heard you say this to people and I've kind of in my head, um, first off, I, I believe, and I've, I've heard the stuff on your program. I believe there, there potentially is like a paranormal aspect to this. Um, for me, that's too big of a thing for my average IQ brain to, to wrap my head around. But the way I think of it is this, this thing, um, in, in its environment, it has, I believe better hearing than we have better eyesight than we have, especially in a forested environment. Um, it's physically, it's faster, stronger, all that kind of stuff. And I believe given if it's got those attributes, if we're out in the woods, say that we're looking for it, it knows we're there long before we ever even have a clue, right? And I think that you know, hear those those terms like Bigfoot or Sasquatch, the uh, hide and seek champion of of the world. You know what? Given those considerations, something that lives in that environment, it hears better than you, sees better than you, it's faster than you. Why couldn't it be some kind of a, I don't know, something off of our tree or maybe its own personal tree, where it's just like it's a, some kind of a primate, and it's perfectly adapted to its environment. And the only time you really see it is by luck, fluke, or it lets you see it. And, and I think that potentially could be, you know, the, the simple explanation. The paranormal one, like I said, that's just that's too big for me. Yeah, it's hard enough to try and explain how this thing exists, and then you start throwing weird stuff in there. And I do believe the weird stuff goes on. Uh, I would say, yes. you know, and I always say it on the show, and I repeat myself a lot, but I think your average person has an encounter like you, John, and uh, they ran into what they think would be, you know, an animal or, um, you know, nothing strange happened as far as eye glowing and but then there's another side to this whole thing to where people who are around them for a while start to describe bizarre things that they do. And it's so hard to pinpoint what this thing is. But I hope you're right. I hope it's just something off the family tree that we just haven't been able to uh, catch up with. Uh, you know, it's who knows? It's what that's why I love that question, because there's no wrong answer. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, so that's my simple answer. And I think given those conditions, you know, the, the eyesight and the hearing and all that kind of stuff, and it, it so perfectly suited to its environment, you know, let's face it, something like that, if we're out in the woods, if it wanted to avoid us, it could just like that. And so maybe that's what's going on. But that's, that's my, you know, average guy, average IQ answer. But uh, I do believe because there's too much of it that people come on your, your show and talk about. I do believe there's another aspect to it, but it's too much for me to grasp, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to grasp. And what's cool about Canada is I've been getting more and more people from uh, Ontario. You and I were talking about that the other day, mm -hmm. and it, it makes me laugh a little bit. I kind of think Ontario is kind of... You know, kind of like how people are in the the middle of the U United States as far as they'll go, well, I thought it was a West Coast problem. I thought it was something that was out there in California. And I, I kind of get that from people in Ontario where they'll go, well, I thought it was more of a, you know, British Columbia problem, uh, you know, Vancouver Island, uh, that sort of thing. But, you know, there's a ton of land uh, in Ontario 
not a big population either for the amount of land out there. No, you know, and so it's, it's no most of, most of the population is along Lake Ontario, and once you start heading north, like it just gets more rural and rural, right? So the big concentration of people down by the lake, you know, city of Toronto and all those other cities along there. But once you head north, yeah, it starts to get pretty rural. Like you don't have to like where we were staying. You don't have to drive far, and you're on gravel roads and backcountry ways and roads that are big signs like unassumed roadway, meaning like there's no winter maintenance. And, you know, it's it's rural and remote. Like when you're, you just don't have to go far. This would be three hours for people who are not from North Ontario. This would be three to three and a half hours north of Toronto. And like I said, you're out there and you can be in the middle of nothing, man. The, the other question I wanted to ask you, was a creature making any noise as it was sprinting away? Did you hear any anything i and i realize your senses are probably all focused on your eyes at that moment trying to examine what you're seeing but did you hear anything as it was running off um i heard initially through the ditch i heard the, the rocks shuffle as it came down and then i and again like cuz like i go over this all the time when it first started to go at it i mean run and just hit it i thought i heard like a thump 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 like like the, the a little bit of pounding of feet but after that, when it began to go, there was nothing else that I heard. Um, I didn't hear it like go into the bush. You know, at, at that point, it's a, it's a, a bit of a distance away from me. Um, no grunts, no breathing or anything like nothing like that. But when it first took those first few strides and like like it literally like got up to such a quick speed in such a short period, there was this little like, and I think that was the feet just like pound on the ground as it took off. And that was really the only thing that I heard that and in the ditch when the rock slid down. Yeah, and, and you talked about it, its walking movements and how weird that it is. And I was telling you, you know, I, I think that their, their knees are more like where our shins are at. So it gives a weird, um, it's really hard to copy that walk. It's really hard to copy that walk that they do because it's, it's such a bizarre movement uh, in, their, in, their, in their legs. Yeah, like if, if, if we tried to do it, like it almost like you'd hurt your knee because the knee, it's almost like it kind of as a swivel as it walks. Right. And it, it doesn't like ours go straight forward and down. And it's almost like they kind of do this little, like, uh, I don't know. For, well, I saw it from the side mostly, but it was, it, it's almost like it comes out a little bit and then goes back in, you know? And it, it, it just, there was something funny about the walk. It, it wasn't like a person, you know, like, like a guy walking. Right. And, and it, it just, it, it Again, it all just added up to me like when it was done. Like, there's no way that was a man who saw me and thought, "Holy cow, I got to get out of here." There's no no way on this earth that I'm convinced of that. There's no way. Yeah, it, it really is a fascinating account, especially you get to see the movements. You know what you saw. Most people don't. Most people will see them. You know, turn and kind of walk off from a distance. You know, from them watching. You know, it's behind a tree and they see it and they they make eye contact and the creature turns around and walks off and it, within a few seconds it's gone. Uh, but in your situation, you know, you got to see it go from uh, two legs down to four. And I mm -hmm. and I agree with you. I think that on four legs, I think they're almost faster. Uh, the movement's a lot quicker. I've heard about them keeping up with cars, uh, you know, well, doing 30, 40 miles an hour. And they're running on all fours on and keeping up with cars, no problem. So, I mean, it, it it's odd, though. You know, it's uh, that they have that they can walk upright and then they can drop down to all fours. And it, it almost seems just as comfortable as they were up on two legs. You know, we're very different. You get us down on all fours and it's, it's slow. It's clumsy. It's, you know, we aren't built that way. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I really think it's knee placement because our knees are 50% up our legs. You know, we, we bend our knee when we walk They're I think they're built differently. I think that they, well, obviously they are to drop down to all fours. Like what you saw is just, uh, just amazing. Do you, do you have any plan? You said you were going to go back to that farm. Yeah. Like we go visit, um, our family every year. They'll give us, you know, Hey, we're going to be up there on these dates and we pick a weekend and we go up and, and hang out with them. Um, and I'm, it'll be again this, this next summer. And I vowed this time I chickened out last summer. Um, but this summer I've, I vowed to myself, I'm going to go over and I'm going to talk to the people and I'm just going to, I'm just going to come out and just say, here, here's what I saw. And, um, who knows, like I said, they may tell me to, you know, to get the hell out of here, or I'm really hoping that even if they don't offer anything, I hope I look at their face and you can look and go, okay, there's something there, right? There's, you know, there's more to this than just, well, Hey, we like our property lit up. 
because it looks when you drive down the road, it looks so out of place. It's all black. There's no street lights. You know, just maybe the odd light at somebody's door, and then all of a sudden you go by this, and it's just like boom. It's just lit, and they've north, south, east, and west. Every corner of that property has got lights facing out. So, you know, again, people that have got major security concerns or my gut that they had a problem and this is how they're dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. I love the encounter, especially the creature's reaction, you know, like I said, avoiding the light and kind of going around the light, you know, it's uh, I do think the lights work at times, not always, but I will say most of the time when people light up their property, these things tend to avoid it. It's a fascinating account, John. I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to come on the show and, and share what happened to you. I really enjoyed talking with you and hearing the encounter. Okay, well, hey, I appreciate you giving the opportunity. Like I said, it it just feels good to be able to talk about it and not be judged, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, Tom. Okay, thanks a lot, Wes. Take care. Next up on the show, I want to welcome uh, Leanne. Leanne, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Wes. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. And I know you had quite the encounter on the uh, kind of the Wyoming border uh, back 17, 18 years ago. If you would, would you just kind of start from the beginning, kind of tell us what you guys were doing and walk us into what happened? Okay. Um, Well, I lived in Powell, Wyoming. I raised my kids there for 20 years. And um, the closest mall is Billings, Montana. So anytime you want to go shopping, you got to go to Billings for anything. And um, there's a couple of different ways to get there. Um, Whenever myself, my friends, whatever, we like to drive the back roads, which would be through, um, it was um, out of town, to a uh, highway, a Badger Basin Highway that took you through Belfry, Montana, Bridger, Montana, up to Billings. And uh, it's there's like oil field or gas plant and different kind of things out there in Badger Basin. It's pretty much just the high desert. There's sagebrush, coyotes, rattlesnakes, you know. And it was dark. We were coming back. I was with a girlfriend. We were shopping in Billings. And uh, she was driving. And we were coming back on that Badger Basin Highway, and we turned, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the name, the number of the highway, but it turns into Lane 9 into Powell, Wyoming. And um, we were coming, coming down there. It's dark, pitch black, flat. There's nothing out there. And in our headlights up ahead, it looked like there was, um, I'm starting to shake a little, sorry. It looked like there was a naked man laying across the highway. Um, the first thing I thought was somebody, you know, injured or, or, you know, out there, a lot of bad things happen in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, people get taken out and murdered and left for dead. And so that's where I went first. And the closer we got, cause she was probably traveling somewhere between 80, 95, you know, somewhere in there, we came up on it really fast. I could see, um, <laughs> I try. Okay. So I tried to think must be a mountain lion. Cause it's not a human. It's not a man because it was all the way across the road. And I'm there's no exaggeration here. There was a hand on the white line on one side of the highway. And there was a foot on the white line on the other side of the highway. This thing was stretched all the way across the road. It wasn't laying down. It was more like in a runner's, I'd say, like in, in the starting position. Um, and it was so baffling and so mind boggling. Um, we ended up coming to a complete stop. It was, it was probably only a hundred, a hundred feet in front of us, maybe not even that far. And I was trying to figure out what it was. I could see the hair blowing. I knew it was hair. I could see the hair blowing in the wind. It wasn't a lot of hair. Um, cause I could see the skin and muscles underneath. I could see chest muscles and six pack. And, um, I, my mind just couldn't grasp what I was seeing. Uh, the f- closest thing that I could think of was an alien. And then, um, and then it turned its head And I don't remember, that's the thing. I think I was busy looking at the hips and legs and the torso. 
when it turned its head. So I don't know how it turned, but it was the creepiest thing I have ever seen in my life. Um, and I talked to my children about it. And they told me that I kept using the word when I got home that night, I kept using the word humanoid face. So it had a human, it had human like features and then this body covered with this hair and the size of it. Um, my late husband was six foot six, wore a size 15 boot. He was 275 pounds. He was a big man. And this thing was three times the size of my husband. It was, it was just so huge. Um, my mind went to alien or uh, government exper experiment gone wrong. I know that sounds completely insane, but I had I had no way of grasping anything that I knew in nature. And um, and my I I grew up with brothers. I have a lot of brothers. They took me hunting and fishing. I was always that annoying little sister that followed them everywhere. I was always in everything. So they taught me, they taught me how to hunt and how to fish. I know how to shoot um, black powder even. I And I've been in the mountains. I took my children in the mountains in Wyoming, Rocky Mountains, for 20 years. I've seen all the animals. I hunted in grizzly country. I backpacked in grizzly country. I knew, I knew this thing didn't know, could not put any kind of a name to it of what I was looking at. Um, and it was gone. It was really, it was really so fast, but yet it felt like it was just standing still, posing for us to look at. But it was one stride. It was in that stride when we were watching it, when we were coming up on it, and then it was just gone. It was just gone in one stride. And my friend and I just we realized the car had was completely stopped. Neither one of us were speaking. We were both in shock. Then we asked, did you see that? Did you, you know, and she never spoke of it again. She was so frightened. It just, it was so frightening. Um, when I got home, I told my kids um, what I had seen and they believed me. They believed me. Um, however, my parents and my brothers, uh, you know, whoever I had told, they didn't believe me. But a couple of weeks later, I was taking my children to Red Lodge, Montana. That was the only place where you could do any fun stuff, you know, um, snowboarding, different kinds of things like that. And um, we were on our way to Red Lodge, Montana. And I told them, this is right where we're getting ready to come up on the place where I saw this creature cross, cross the road. And there was four to six. I don't remember the exact number, but there was four to six vehicles all blacked out with government plates sitting on the side of the road about a mile from where I saw that thing. So that just kind of, that just kind of, you know, concreted it for me that it must have been an alien or it must have been a government experiment. I never once thought of Sasquatch or Bigfoot ever, not even one time. Um, there was probably a handful of other times that we were driving during the daytime out on that road that, that I had my two youngest children with me and they remember seeing other times where we, there was blacked out vehicles out there parked in the desert. And there was one time, um, there was a big bo black box truck with some kind of satellite uh, uh, dish on the top of it that was sitting out there. Yeah, it's it was, kind of a weird thing for the government to be hanging out because mm -hmm. it's pretty lonely out there. I mean, you it get is. on those highways, it's pretty lonely. Yep. Um, yeah, that's fascinating about the government vehicles. I want to ask you, uh, when it turned and looked at you, was there anything that stood out to you? Uh, to um, <laughs> so the mouth, it was like the Cheshire cat, the grin of the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland. It was the creepiest thing. That I have ever, I can't, I, it, it seemed so ridiculous. It was, and it was grinning. There was this just row of big teeth and it was just grinning. It was just so unbelievable that, that that was happening, that there was anything that even could, could do that. It, my mind just couldn't. I, yeah, that makes it even more creepy, especially when you get a weird smile like that. And I've had other witnesses say that. They'll say it had like huge chiclet type teeth and the jaw was when it grinned or when it opened its mouth. Um, I've had other eyewitnesses talk about it being like a pest dispenser. Uh, it's not like, you know, our mouths are pretty small for the most yeah. part. 
And when people describe seeing that, uh, the mouth in particular, it's always huge. Um, it's strange how you come up and you think it's a naked man. What what color was it? What color that's, was the hair? I mean, okay, so that's why it was it was blonde, like strawberry blonde, like a Pomeranian, or that's why I tried to make it a mountain lion when it wasn't a human. <laughs> I tried to make it into a mountain lion because that was the, like the color of it. The skin, same color, very um, light, very light skinned. It was it was the craziest thing. I. It, it had no tail. I mean, it wasn't a mountain lion. It wasn't a man. It it wasn't anything that I had in my databanks. Yeah, your brain kind of goes and like it's being fried for a moment trying to figure out what box to put this in. Um, you know, and the other thing, too, is you hear about them crossing roads and they'll do it in one step or two steps. And the fact that you kind of saw it down on all fours, you know, yes. crawling across the road, their behavior always throws me off because for such an elusive animal i mean it could have it must have heard you guys coming oh yeah and you think they would take off but in most situations they don't they'll kind of sit there you know and and make sure you see them before they move along or whatever uh it always throws me off when i hear that but i hear it a lot of them doing that what do you think he was just crossing across the road and then uh you guys came up too quick on him or you would think he'd be gone in two seconds. You know what I mean? Well, that's you? that's the thing. When we when I first saw it, I thought he was just laying on the road. Some dude laying on the road, you know. And so maybe he was laying on the road. I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody know what these animals really do? I mean, that that's exactly what it felt like when when um when I was thinking about it when I was writing the email to send to you was that it felt like. He, he was posing because he wasn't in a hurry or she, I don't, it, well, it didn't have boobs. No, it, it didn't have breasts. It definitely was pecs. So the, the mouth really throws you off when you it, see how yes. big it is, but I'm kind of curious, did it, did it look manlike when it turned and looked at you? Yes. Yes. It had human features. It was, it was a humanoid face. It was not an animal face. It was not a gorilla face. It was, it was human-like. It was the freakiest thing. Um, that's why I, why I went to Alien. I don't do scary movies. I, I just don't like them. I'm just too sensitive for that. When I was a child, there was the movie, The ba Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And there was the homeless guy with the dog. And after he got out of the pod, he was a dog with a human head. That was the only reference I had to what I was looking at on that highway, was that most frightening body snatcher movie. Yeah, I would imagine. You can you imagine if he stood up? You know, if he's reaching all the way across the highway, stretched out the way he was, I bet that would have been a tall creature standing, you know, on two legs, looking down at you guys. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I'm really glad. I don't know what I don't. I'm having chest pain right now, even thinking about. Oh, I'm so glad he didn't stand up. Oh no. Yeah, yeah it was did, bad enough. Did it change your opinion? I mean, did you continue to hunt and continue to go hiking or? Yes, because I, I didn't know. I never thought Sasquatch or Bigfoot. I, I really thought it must be an alien or something. And then when I saw the, and I'm going to call them the men in black. When we saw the men in black, then I was like, oh, you know, no, no big deal. It's getting taken care of. And so, yes, I continued. And I have, I've taken, um, young girls between the ages of 12 and 18 out into the wilderness on 50 mile hikes. I've taken my children out um, river rafting, kayaking, backpacking in grizzly country. I've even taken women that and age of 14 and up that are my family members into the wilderness and taught them how to, I mean, some women don't even know how to sleep in a tent, you know, um, or have never had the opportunity. So I've done all those kinds of things and I taught their safety and I taught how to hunt the mountains in Wyoming and how to be safe. And I had a great teacher, my oldest brother, who I, I talked to him this morning. He had an encounter, which I did not know about. Um, I mean, my nephew had told me, but I didn't ever know about the encounter. He was 11 years old. That was the year I was born in 1967 and nobody believed him either. But he taught me um, how to do all the hunting and the fishing and the being of this being safe. And um, uh, one of his comments is, 
people never look up. People should always look up, but they're just a bunch of rock pickers out there walking, looking at the ground. If you've scanned the trail ahead of you, then why are you looking at the ground? You need to be paying attention to where you are. And yeah, so, right. yeah. And I, I had no clue. I had no clue that these things, I, I just kind of, I guess, thought legend, you know, rare, <laughs> mythical creatures. I really did not know that this was an animal that we reside with. I, and I do now. Yeah. Yeah. The, the government vehicle thing really surprises me. Not so much surprises me, but, you know, what else are they doing out there? Uh, I told you when we were talking on the phone, you know, I've, I've taken my motorcycle across Wyoming. And for the most part, you're alone except for the god awful wind that never mm -hmm. stops. Um, but you come across some very lonely areas out there. And it's weird that you would see government vehicles out there. They must have been out there because of that thing. I'm sure you weren't the only one who, who saw it. Um, I'm kind of curious, what did your brother see? What did he tell you he saw? Um, so he he said that there were the wood. It was in Ferndale, Washington, and there were woods across the street from where we lived. And he would go out there every day and play in the woods. You know, there was even some old abandoned shack out there that he would find apothecary bottles in, kind for, with corks. So, um, he'd always be digging around out there, and that was like his little fort place. And so he just went out there. Um, one afternoon and he was running down the trail heading to his little area and he came across something that he thought was a big old nasty rotten bear and, and then it stood up <laughs> and he took off running as fast as he could yeah because yeah, it wasn't a bear yeah yeah that that is at least your brother was saw it. you know you guys yep. have a chance to kind of talk about what each one of you guys saw um, in yep. the encounter, and you know that that's the encounter I'd want. You know, driving not so much in the middle of the road. Maybe if I'm passing it doing 90, that's the encounter I would want. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yes, me too. He lives in Powell, and I called him today because I was like, I gotta tell you this, you know, and I want to hear, you know, because my nephew had told me that he saw a Bigfoot when he was young, and so I called and got the story, and I told him about mine, and and yeah, because and he, yeah, it's crazy. He, yeah. he, yeah, he knows they're animals. Yeah, more and more people are definitely seeing them. And I think um, more and more people are coming forward with, with the, what, what they saw. You know, and your encounter uh, is creepy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that will always stay with you. You know, I'm sure you've played that over in your head over and over and over again, that thing leaning, laying across the road, you know? Yes, I have. What do you think? I have. What do you think that they are, Leanne? What's your opinion as far well, as... Uh, well, I have to say, um, after what I have um, been listening to on your show, and I love it when you have, you know, the, the zoologists and the biologists and all the people that they're, they know their field, and yet there's this, this animal. Yeah, it's an animal. I, it has to be. There is, I don't think it's an alien I'm pretty sure it's an animal that we've been coexisting with and is very elusive. It's very good at hiding. I mean, we're dangerous. We carry guns. Yeah, I mean, we're the most dangerous animal on the planet. Do you think they're more of a, like a non-human primate? Or what? when you say animal, what, what category would you put them in? Um, that's, yes, I think that's, if I had to put it in a category, yes, that's what I think I would do now that I have been learning more about it because I put that out of my mind except for you know nieces and nephews would come around and then my kids would say oh let's have mom tell you about the things she saw you know and I could frighten the kids with it pretty good um but then I re I moved to Oregon recently and because I think I'm such a great hunter in the Rocky Mountains <laughs> I went out into Oregon to hunt this year uh deer and elk and I had I had no idea of my surroundings i really didn't and and now i have an education <laughs> yeah a little bit more thick out here you know yes you get underneath it is. that tree cover oh it gets black in there and it is scary yeah yeah, yeah. definitely would would you want to see another one again um do i want to no no i do not i i would prefer not to um uh, however i'm not going to let it 
frighten me so that I stay out of the woods. I just will make sure I'm not alone anymore because I used to not be afraid to go by myself. I would go hiking by myself all the time. And uh, now that I'm getting this education, I'm thinking about a lot of the the people that have gone missing in Wyoming where I lived and especially um, Amy Bechtel. I think about her the past few weeks. I've been thinking about her. She was you know, running through the woods outside of Lander, Wyoming, and there's never been anything found ever. And so I think that maybe she came to a foul, you know, foul play ending with one of these creatures. Yeah, it could be, could be. What, what do you make of that, that smile? You know, the, you know, when a a gorilla or a, um, a chimpanzee, when they, they don't really smile at you, they'll show you their teeth. And you know they're not smiling, right? Uh, it, the the lip roll thing. Yeah. That, yes. No. It did not roll its lips. There was not a lip roll in any kind of monkey lip thing at all. It was like a grin. Yeah. It was. It was like all teeth when you say cheese and you smile. Yeah, it's so strange you say that because I've heard that, and people have referenced the cat from Alice in Wonderland the same way you did. Really? Uh, yeah, because yeah. that's the closest thing I could think of. Yeah, just that huge mouth, and a lot of times I'll ask people, "Do you think it was smiling?" And a lot of people will say, "Yeah, I think it was." Um, you know, and you could show them a gorilla and say, "Do you think this gorilla is smiling at you?" And they'll say, "No, it's showing its teeth." Right. Uh, there's a difference. So yeah. it's weird. You know, it's, it's so bizarre. Um, it really is a fascinating account. I mean, I, it's one of those, you got to see the whole body of the, you know, a lot of times when people run into them, they'll run into it and they'll see it from the chest up or they'll see it hiding behind a tree, but to have it, you know, out in the Oh open, yeah. Um, Laid right out there. <laughs> it yeah. was just, yeah. So, but it, yes, it does. It, when I run that, the whole entire thing over and over in my head, it, it feels like a grin. It felt like cheesy, you know, like, yes, maybe it was displaying itself. Maybe that's what it was just going to lay on the road and see if somebody ran over it. I don't know. I don't know, but it was really weird. How much do you think it weighed? Oh, like I said, my my late husband was 270, 75 pounds, and it was three of him. It, it was the hugest thing. I mean, um, I... <sighs> I if it stood up, I bet you its shoulders were as wide as that caravan, that Dodge caravan we were riding in. Oh, it was just massive. That's the thing that was so baffling was the the size of it. It just didn't fit anything. Yeah, yeah, they never do. It's um, it's a very cool account. You know, I'm sure you don't feel that way, but for me, listening to it <laughs> and that behavior of it, you know, crawling across the road. Uh, it makes me really wonder what it's doing. And then the government vehicles, it, I would like to say that surprises me, but it really doesn't. Um, and you know, you know, well, as I do out there, there's nothing. And there's, so there's nothing. really no reason for several blacked out government vehicles to be hanging out in a certain area out there. Cause there's nothing there. And I know oh, that yeah. firsthand I've driven a motorcycle across that state. There's oh, yeah. except nothing. for the, the towns you come across, there's nothing there. <laughs> and your only friend is the wind. Oh, sorry, it's bad. sorry to people who are in Wyoming. I, I, it's unless you've been there, it's hard to explain the wind. It is when it snows, it's horizontal. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, I and that's that's the thing about when the when I saw the blacked out vehicles, um, I knew I knew in with every fiber of my being, I knew that they were there because of what I had seen. I knew that, and I knew it every time I saw them. I, because it was so not natural. It was not a natural thing as far as my mind knew. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. They they seem to very be very unnatural when you run into them, the way they move, the way they and for something so large, it seems bizarre to me that we can't catch up with it. You know, if we were chasing uh, you know, one foot tall primate people were seeing i could go well you know i mean there's a lot of places for but you know these things are giants and yes but we can't catch up with them it makes me really question on what these things are but i always love hearing uh people's opinion and and welcome to the uh, welcome back to the pacific northwest as opposed to uh, wyoming yes and i and i can't i can't thank you enough for coming on liam 
thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Happy New Year. Until next time, everyone. <laughs>